Welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you step by step the way to value a company so we can figure out if the stock is over or undervalued. The first thing we do is enter the financial information into my discounted cash flow Excel model. We then add the debt and equity information. Finally, we determine if the stock is a buy or a sell. We then look at the financial ratios and compare them to its competitors. I'm going to walk you through the entire process so you can do it on your own after watching this video. Make sure to leave a comment if you have any questions. The company we're going to look at is El Pollo Loco. This stands for the crazy chicken. This is a Mexican style grilled chicken restaurant. The first location was opened in Sinaloa, Mexico in 1974. It expanded to the United States in 1980 and it currently has 500 restaurants which include franchises and company owned. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of 634 spots, $7 million. So that's the value of the company according to the stock market. And they're trading at 1806. So that's one share of stock. And now we're gonna pull in the free cash flows. And the way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows. And then you discount those numbers back to today's value, which is what I'm doing in this video. Every year they have positive free cash flow, which means they're generating more cash than they're spending. That's a good sign. Let's get their net income. This is the profit and loss from the income statement. And you can see one year they have negative net income. We also need the sales, which is also on the income statement. And each year their sales are increasing. So that's really good. In 2018, they had negative $9 million of net income. And this was due to a lawsuit that they settled that year for $36.3 million. Here's some more information if you want to stop the video and read it. So pretty much the lawsuit entailed misleading investors. Also, they had a lawsuit regarding employee pay. Obviously, this is a one-time thing, but we hope they don't have many lawsuits in the future which bring down their net income. Let's look at the capital structure of the company so we can figure out the discount rate to apply to the future cash flows. They pay 3.7 million of interest on their debt. Now let's see how much debt they have. We'll go to the balance sheet. We'll go to liability section. They have no current debt. They do have 97 million of long-term debt. That's debt due after 12 months. They pay 3.8% interest on their debt. Interest payments are tax deductible. So let's get their effective tax rate. We'll go back to the income statement. Income before tax of 35 million income tax of 9.7 million. So their effective tax rate is 28%. So the cost of debt is the interest rate times one minus the effective tax rate. So the cost of debt is 2.74%. To get the cost of equity, we need the beta. The beta is how volatile the stock is relative to the market. So the S&P index has a beta of one. This has a beta of 1.66. So the stock is a bit more volatile than the market. So current assets are assets that can be liquidated into cash within 12 months, and that's $25 million. And they have 8 million of cash, 8.5 million of net receivables. Net receivables are accounts receivable, which is how much money other companies owe you, minus the amount of receivables you do not expect to receive because you're not gonna receive all the money that's owed to you. Some of the companies that owe you money may go bankrupt, or they may need to renegotiate the terms because they're struggling financially. And companies need to report their net receivables to give a clearer indication on their balance sheet because nobody receives all the money. There's always a few percentage that isn't received for whatever reason. They have $2 million of inventory. Let's pull their current liabilities. This is also needed to calculate the current ratio later. That's $74 million. Let's look to see what they have in current liabilities. $5.6 million of accounts payable. That's how much money they owe to either banks or their vendors when they buy products. Everything in current liabilities is owed within 12 months. So keep that in mind. 
They have 4.9 million of taxes payable. That's how much money the company owes to the government in taxes. And they're not behind in taxes, but it's more of a timing thing. Crude liabilities of $35 million. These are expenses the company has incurred but has not yet paid. So a common accrued liability is payroll and payroll taxes. You usually accrue payroll throughout the week or throughout the month, but you don't actually pay it till the end of the month or till the following month. And then when you pay it, it gets removed from accrued liabilities. Deferred revenue of $3.7 million. This is the best liability to have. This is money the company received, but it has not yet delivered the product or service. A good example of this, but it has nothing to do with this company, but it is a good example to convey the message. If you wanted to buy a magazine subscription and it cost $120, which is 12 magazines, one a month, and each magazine costs $10, you would send $120 to the magazine company in advance before you received any magazines. So the magazine company would take the $120 and put it into deferred revenue because they haven't delivered any products to you. And every month they mail you a magazine, they take $10 out of deferred revenue and book it to revenue. Other current liabilities of $3.3 million. These are current liabilities that are not significant enough to break out into the individual lines. So the $3.3 million may be the result of a number of different liabilities. Let's get their stockholders equity. This is total assets minus total liabilities. So that's the value of the company according to the balance sheet. And let's look at their stockholders equity. And they have $351,000 of common stock. This is unrelated to the stock that's trading in the market. The stock that's trading in the market is obviously worth a lot more than $351,000. So when a company IPOs or issues new stock, they assign a par value to each stock and it's an arbitrary number. It's usually like a penny or a tenth of a penny. This is just a way for them to keep track of the number of common stock that's out in the market. And retained earnings is if you took the sum of all the net incomes from all the past years since the company started. Then you took that number and you subtracted the amount of dividends they paid for every year since they started. That's your retained earnings. And usually you want to see a positive retained earnings. Most good companies have a positive retained earnings. This company has negative retained earnings, which is not a good thing. Accumulated other comprehensive income is the unrealized gain or loss on an investment that has appreciated or depreciated, but a sale has not yet occurred. An example is in the airline industry, airlines buy futures contracts in oil. And those contracts change in price day to day, but they don't sometimes exercise those contracts till they actually need the oil. So in order to reflect the actual value of those contracts, they put it onto the balance sheet. Let's go back to the income statement and get their EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes, that's $38 million. That's how much money the company generated on its regular operational business, but before it paid interest on its debt and before it paid taxes. Let's look at the capital structure. The cost of debt is 2.7% and the weight of debt is 28%. The cost of equity is 15% and the weight of equity is 72%. So the WAC, the weighted average cost of capital is 11.5%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all free cash flows past year four. And we estimated those numbers based off of the financial information we input earlier. We had to discount those numbers back to today's dollar amount using the weighted average cost of capital. And those discounted numbers are here in green. And if you sum these numbers, that's the value of the company according to the model. And that's $98 million. And if you take that value and divide it by 35 million shares, we get an intrinsic stock price of $3. They're trading at $18. So they're trading at a significant premium. Let's see what simply Wall Street values the company at. They're even lower. They're at $1.22. Let's see where the stock has been trading. So you can see it's been up and down the past few years, but the price has really been driven up since coronavirus. It was at maybe $7 when coronavirus hit, but for some reason, investors feel the future of the company is gonna be really strong, so they're willing to pay $20 for the stock. Not exactly sure why the stock has been driven up so much, but 
Let's look at the financial ratios to see if we get more information. They have a bad PE, a good price of sales, and a good price to book. So PE is stock price over earnings per share. To get earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. And this indicates investors are willing to pay $25 for $1 of earnings. I like to see a PE of 15 or below. They have a price to sales ratio of 1.4. That's stock price over sales per share. To get sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. And this indicates investors are willing to pay $1.40 for $1 of revenue. That's a good ratio. I like to see below 2.5. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To get book value per share, it's equity over shares outstanding. And they have a price to book of 2.6. I like to see below 3.5. This indicates investors are willing to pay $2.60 for $1 book value. A really bad current ratio and a weak ROE. Current ratio is current assets 25 million over current liabilities 74 million. So they cannot cover their current liabilities so they need to take on more debt. ROE is 25 million net income over equity 246 million. So they're providing a 10% return to their equity holders. I like to see 20% or above for this ratio. Interest coverage ratio 10.4, that's EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes over interest expense of 4 million. So they can cover their interest payment 10 times, which is good. Now the best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Bloomin' Brands, which has Outback Steakhouse, Caraba Italian Grill, Bonefish Grill, and other companies. I also did videos on Cheesecake Factory, Chipotle, Denny's, Darden, which has the Olive Garden, McDonald's, MTY Group, which is a Canadian company, Dave & Buster's, Quick Serve, which is Pizza Hut, Kentucky Fried Chicken, and some other companies, Starbucks, and Wendy's. Now, if Loco has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they're in green, they're better than the average. So they're worse than the average in price to earnings. They're better than the average in price to sales. They're worse than the average in price to book. The average is 1.2. So they have 2.6. Even though I said they have a good price to book, you should compare it to others in the industry. And companies like Starbucks and McDonald's have a negative price to book, so that's bringing the average down. Current ratio 0.3, which is really bad. The average in the industry is below one, so the average company can't cover their current liabilities, but they are the worst, tied with Dave & Buster's. Their ROE is better than the average at 10%. The average is 5%. Their debt is much better than the average. The average is 64%. They're only at 28%. So they have a lot of room to borrow. But they're a really small company, so they may not get as good terms as large companies like McDonald's and Starbucks. So I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching.